If you've been watching the latest Minecraft snapshots, you will know that Minecraft recently added one command, one simple command that allows for a multitude of possibilities. I am of course talking about the new fill limit game rule. Wait, sorry, I meant the new string data subcommand. While not being a super diverse command, it allows you to split a string up into several individual characters and deal with each one separately. Now, it just so happened that the data pack jam was starting on the same week. I hadn't participated in the data pack jam for a while, so I decided to give it a shot. I also happened to have talked to Moxfelix that day and we agreed to work together. The theme was announced to be ancient technology. Moxfelix came up with a pretty cool idea that we could make, a custom programming language with a controllable robot. I suggested that it could be a copper or tough golem, as they fitted the theme nicely but weren't already in the game. We then talked for a long time, figuring out the syntax of the language and who would do what part. We decided that he he would make the parser for the language, turning source code into structured data that my interpreter could understand and run. So we got coding. Unfortunately, I got so engrossed in the data pack that I don't have much footage from the development process, so I'll have to go back through it. There are two main things that my interpreter had to understand, instructions and literals. Instructions are things like move and print, which tell the bot what to do, and literals are the values we give to them, such as the string hello or the array one to Three. I decided to start with the evaluate function, which turns literals from the parser into values that the interpreter can understand. By the end of the first day, it could turn this expression into what it really meant. It was raw data at the time, but I later changed it to a typed object to make it easier to handle. I also implemented two instructions, move and place. They were still not very polished, and the block's placement was extremely janky, but the point is they worked. My confidence that we could finish such an ambitious data pack in only one week increased. On day two, I continued my productive spree by adding expressions. I also added most of the rest of the instructions. At this point, I was positive that we could complete the pack in time. Day three, I mostly polished up the features I had already done. For the next two days, I didn't do much. I had already implemented every instruction, every data type. I didn't know what to do next. Here's what Moxvelix was working on. I am Moxvelix, and I... I worked on the parser, so I took in all of the writing and turned it into a usable format for gears to use to then execute the code on the bot. I'm gonna give a little explanation, a very basic overview as to kind of how it worked. Each character of your program is observed one by one, one after each other. As the different characters come through, we need to keep track as to what they are changing. So we start with what we call the root element. The characters come along until they match an instruction. Now that instruction has data in it that tells us what other values the instruction should then add to the stack. For example, the print command will add an expression to the stack. An expression will first look for any character that can be used to open a literal. If we were to print hello, it would look for an open double quote. Once it's found that, it adds a string literal to the stack. The different values are added into this string literal until we find a closing double quote. The string is removed from the top of the stack and added in to the expression. The expression now looks to see if there is an operator, such as plus, minus, divide. If it cannot find one of those, it will then close itself and go back down to the instruction. If the instruction has no more arguments that can be opened, it will then close itself, adding itself into root, and then root will return itself ready to be passed. Then Saturday came. Moxfelix finally had a working version of the parser, so I hooked it up to the interpreter and this happened. Let's have it print hello and then move forward one block. Yo! Yes! Let's go! Yes! Let's go! <laughs> Wow, that's insane. Oh. At the end of day 
6, we were very close to have it fully functional. There was only one problem. Two developers with big dreams can't go anywhere without someone to be their designer and give them all the assets to make their project great. And that's where Wolfian comes in. Wolfian had been there all along, quietly listening to us discussing abstract syntax trees and string literals, but now was his time to shine. Unbeknownst to us, or at least to me, Wolfian had been quietly working away. We've just had a look at some of the structures that Wolfian has been making, and I have to say they are super cool. I still find it hard to believe that we've got this far in one week. Oh my goodness, look, it's a little cute golem thing, and then you can place it down. At this point, I realized how much more stuff we had to implement, so much so that for the rest of the day, I just coded. Meanwhile, Noxfelix was busy implementing the custom structures. At about 9pm or 7.30am for Noxfelix, almost everything was complete. We just had some final stuff to agree on, and so at 10 to 10, I zipped up the data pack and uploaded it to Planet Minecraft. We had done it made a fully functional programming language with Minecraft data packs, and probably the first ever, as the feature making it possible had only been out for 11 days. Now let me show you the result. When you first load into your world, you won't immediately notice anything different, other than if you type the reload command, then you'll see that you'll have golem bots installed. You will also need Moxlib and Moxlib Experimental, both of which will be linked on the data pack page itself. Now it is also worth noting that the original data pack that we submitted to the jam made Made in a single week has quite a few bugs in it. I'll leave a link to the modrinth page in the description so you can see version 0.1.0 which is the original version or take a look at the newest version for bug fixes and new features. Now once you've progressed a bit in your world you will want to start looking for some of the structures. You've probably seen a couple of them from the clip of us looking at them in the demo world, but there's four structures. The first one are the cogs that you can find lying around in your world. They're nothing special, but they are a good source of copper. The next structure, which somehow seems to be linked to the generation of the cogs, is the bunker. This is the home of the keepers. If you go inside, you'll find something like this. A small room with beds, chests, and a black box in the middle. Now I won't spoil the loot tables for these chests too much, but here's a quick idea of it. Nothing super overpowered or anything. There is, however, quite a lot of honey in here. The other thing is this black box, which, if we open it, we'll find a chest containing a book called A Memoir After the Fall. And I'm definitely not going to read this book out, because as you can see it's 13 pages long. But it's the diary of the Keepers during a war that took place, 48 years after the Industrial Revolution. If you read through it, you'll see that the Keepers are a group of people who want to keep nature alive and are rebelling against the Industrial Revolution. The next and slightly harder structure to find is the lab. It's also harder to traverse as it always generates underwater. I would recommend bringing doors. Once you go in here, you'll find a bunch of chests, some of which contain potions of water breathing, which is very helpful, and some of which contain a bunch of other stuff. There's also another black box in here, which contains a notebook from the humanists. The last, and for sure the hardest structure to find, is the airship. The best way I think of finding it is either looking up, where you can see the tips of the jets just within render distance, or looking for dark spots like this, where the airship has blocked out the sun. Either way, once you've built up to the top of these, you'll find yourself in a control room. You can go out and into the hold, where you again will find lots more chests and one final book. This is a book from the industrialists. They are all for the industrial revolution and technical advancements. You will also find, if you go around here, one copper golem, which you can collect and take back to your base to the program. And here, just in front of it, will be a chest with, among other things, some example programs that the creator of the golem wrote themselves. These will teach you the programming language of golem script, and as you collect more you will build up a knowledge of the programming language so you can program the golem. Again, I'm not going to show too many of these because the whole point is that you figure them out yourselves. And that is the story of how we made Minecraft's first written programming language in a week. And now I'm sure you're all wondering who won. Well, unfortunately, when this video gets released, the data pack jam is still in the voting phase where all the packs get judged. But as soon as it's over, I'll record a reaction video and link it in the description and pinned comment down below. See you then.